Howdy all of you delicious people I'm here today to review Blue Mountain State. So immediately I would probably have this quick comparison of really having this be like if college football would have like American Pie like themes through every one of these episodes more than likely that would be Blue Mountain State for you. Uh, really, I think my main attraction upon this show was that there was a number of people that came from Smallville that were also on this show. So, like, I was kind of interested in this show simply because, like, it's kind of familiar territory. Uh, and plus also, once I started to watch one of the episodes, I'm like, yeah, like, I'll go on and continue to watch this show. Uh, because of just how the goofy episodes kind of, uh be put in place um because i watched the original airing of this when it originally was on like spike tv uh because it was like late at night and i was like hey what is this um so yeah like i decided i'm like oh, okay cool like uh check this one out and then like i decided to re-go into this one and uh and watch the show so uh, so with that said, what are these the first three episodes about for season one? Uh, I think currently right now this is available on IMDb TV, so you can probably watch the whole show if that's what you want to go on and do. Uh, really there probably also is like Amazons or something like that that probably does have the show somewhere. Or really, you could probably also go on and Google search certain apps that would probably have this show also. You could probably go on to a Google search and search the word Let Her See Movies and be able to find an app that Darren Facts helps you be able to watch anything you freaking want. Uh, you could also go on to an app called Fox HD Movies. The logo will say Fox HD Movies, but the title will say something different. It'll say play 1080p hd but if you search the word fox hd movies uh this app of which that i'm just to say is uh an app that you can download and whichever uh so the first three episodes about blue mountain state uh like we have some goofy concepts in these episodes but uh goofy but uh like when really looking at it, these episodes kind of much more stand out than kind of the normal run-of-the-mill episodes. So, the first episode is to, of course, be the weird, goofy, hazing episode, where, of course, we have a number of freshmen that are making it to Blue Mountain State, who I guess uh, they have kind of uh, won a lot of games through a number of histories, uh, even if it's scandally had been done at some point of past. So we have all these guys who are to all have these notebooks who are to have a number of secrets. And at one point we're going to have these secrets get revealed just so somebody can go on and benefit from this secret. Uh, and then also we are to have people get punished uh, for having or not having these notebooks. Uh, episode two is to really deal with the fact that Thad is to bizarrely just have this sister kind of pop up out of nowhere. Really, I don't think she actually had a name in this show. I think her name was like, they just called her like Bosnian or Bosnia when she was kind of dancing on the dance floor so but really the whole second episode is to both tie with craig having this promise ring and some solid gold stripper strip club like that's all that the second episode really ties to and then the third we of course have it be an episode where uh alex is having this birthday and uh, we have, uh, Thad, who is to have this kind of, uh, pocket toy, <laughs> of which that I can't go on and want to actually say the name of, because more than likely, 
Uh, that's a little bit going too far for whichever thing. But they definitely have the title of this episode to tell you what exactly this is. They go on and say it well far enough within this uh, episode to tell you exactly what it is consistently. Um, and so I'm going to figure out a way to maybe say like po pocket plastic throughout the whole ep throughout the third episode because there's just a lot of uh, times in which that they re-reference this toy and there's no nicknames or there's no convenient ways to slice or dice it. So it is what it is with these episodes and really at some points to avoid cussing, cursing or whatever. Uh, to also try to have YouTube uh, not really realize exactly uh, the words of which that I am going to be saying. Uh, <laughs> you always have to be very mysterious about these episodes uh, and shows and, and whatever as long as I can try to get them out. Uh, anyways, pushing on. So, with that said, speaking of pushing, let's push it, push it real good and go into this thing that is to be dubbed spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about the time you get spoil this episode. Let's go into it. So, really, of course, in the first episode, we, of course, have Coach Marty Daniel uh, that is kind of, like, preparing all of the guys to get ready for their practices and yada, yada, yada. So, in the first episode, we have Thad, who is to go on and give all these freshman notebooks of all these secrets for all the other players. So... Consistently, that is to consistently ask all these players to show that they have these notebooks. So, we go on and we also have this episode trying to introduce characters to other people. But the real deal of how this kind of starts off is we have Alex who wakes up for the day to be talking to his best friend, Sammy who desperately wants Alex to smack him overhead, over his head with this beer, of course, which Alex does. So, Alex is to be greeted by these two women that are to have these trench coats and, and on and not, not much else. And so, Alex, of course, is going at it with these two women. Uh, Sammy is to sneak his way into seeing some of that action. And so we come to find out that these girls are boosters. And so they're going to be boosting up the confidence, I guess, of some of these freshmen. We even at one point where Craig, uh, who is to have his girlfriend, Denise, living with him. All of a sudden have these two women arrive and Denise is to beat the sh out of these women. And so... We go on and get into the mix of all these characters meeting one another. And so Alex goes on and meets Craig because Craig is this star athlete. And Alex is just kind of riding the bench because he is the second string quarterback. Which basically means he's like, well, yeah, I'll get all the benefits of being uh, a part of this team. And like, I won't actually be playing. And... There's a lot of times, of course, where Alex just throw these really good bombs, these really good passes, and the coach is like, hey, if you go on there and you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to be our starter. And Alex is like, nope. <laughs> Chuck, interception. Like, man, like, there was so much potential. Like, yeah, there was. Oh, well. <laughs> like, what was that? Nothing. No. <laughs> Alex messes things up on purpose so he can maintain his second string uh, quarterbacking. So, we, so we go on in this story and what eventually unfolds in this first episode is everybody is to go on and have their notebooks and, and is to go on and have this party. Uh, I think at Thad's place. So, Alex, of course, to go on and sleep with this one uh, girl who, I guess, sleeps with all of the uh, 
football players. And so Alex is to forget about his notebook. And so we have Sammy who takes advantage of this woman who is in Alex's bed because she is to go on and say that I guess Sammy had come into Alex's room and peed in his bed late at night. Because when S Alex is to awake, he's like, is this pee? Is this pee? <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's pee. So Alex goes on and he asks Sammy to try to get Alex's notebook. And while Alex is uh, gone, Sammy's kind of thumbing through these pages. Because Sammy desperately is to want to be this football team's mascot. And there's a problem with that because it seems that there's a guy named Chester who is already fitting that bill. And so Sammy is going to try to figure out in this episode how to try to get to be this team's mascot. And how he does that is he finds out that Chester is to have the secret that he uh, kind of gives himself a low hand five right into the trophy room before every single uh every single game as a like uh as a a way to kind of boost himself so sammy goes on and is to follow chester into this trophy room and now sammy is blackmailing chester for him to be this school's mascot and it works out chester is to give his resignation and so Sammy is to hand off these letters to Thad saying that, hey, like I'm the I'm your team's new mascot. So and then Sammy is to hand off Alex's uh notebook a little bit later. So Craig is trying to be nice to Alex, and so Craig is telling Alex because he doesn't have his notebook, and Thad is starting to ask around. We have Craig, who's like, well, hey, like, how about this? How would I go on and, like, I I show them that I have the notebook and then I slide it to you behind my back and then you can show them that you have your notebook too. And so all of a sudden both Craig and Alex are to get into a fight because Alex is kind of ticked at Craig because Alex is like, Man, like, you can go on and have any woman you want, and, like, you could be the man of this, uh, like, college, but you're sticking around with a woman that's, like, never gonna put out. Like, you're a moron. <laughs> like, you're stupid. And so, Craig and Alex get in a fight over that, and, because supposedly Craig has had blue balls for, uh, two years now, and... Alex is kind of telling Craig, it's like, you do realize that this girl is never going to put out for you. <laughs> She's just not. She's never going to. Uh, and then by the time that you guys actually do get married and do what, like, she's just, it's never going to happen. So they get in a fight to that, but then they kind of forgive one another. Plus, weirdly, Thad had this weird, goofy, uh, hazing thing that all the guys were too supposed to, like, shave themselves but it kind of looks like most of the shaving cream uh, seems to go by the cheek uh, side of things. And I'm not talking around the face. I'm talking some other cheeks. So we have these guys shaving everybody. And so because Thad wants all the guys to be smooth, weirdly, as if it, it matters. <laughs> Maybe to be more aerodynamic. And Alex kind of calls that on this, like, you know what, isn't this a little, little like, peculiar? Like, he says another word. Um, like, he says gay. Like, he, like, isn't this a little, like, odd that you're having us do this? And so that is like, no, it's not. No, it's hazing. And it's like, sure it is. Sure it is. So later in the episode, we have these guys get confronted uh and so thad is to come and and to to go on and enforce uh both craig and alex 
and Sammy uh, to all do this race with a Oreo between some cheeks. Uh, because, of course, they were to either not have their notebook or there's some kind of reasoning to have, like... Because Craig is to say, well, I have my notebook. I had my notebook the whole time. And Thad is just like, well, Mr. Goody Two-Shoes. <laughs> like, so... They just suckered, like, Craig into this. But, like, he had no real good reason for having to do this stupid thing. Plus... It didn't really make sense for Thad also to do this as well. And everybody is to remark on that. It's like, well, why is Thad going on and doing this? And it's just because he's weird anyways. Uh, no offense to Alan. It's just like Thad is a very uh, weird but funny character. Like throughout three episodes, like uh, Thad is kind of the funniest one, especially once we get to the third episode where he's going on and talking about every time that he goes on and puts this pocket toy on, let's just say. He thinks of his dad. <laughs> and I'm like, that has got to be the weirdest thing to say. Uh, Thad, I'm sorry, but it's true. Uh, so, what ends up happening is that Alex is to think he's to win this race, but he ends up dropping his cookies somewhere but like 10 miles before uh, the finish line. You would have thought like one of these characters would have probably leaped and kind of like tucked it back, if you know what I mean. Uh, the cookie, not the... You, you get what I'm saying. So, but yeah, so that ended up winning. And so all the other guys had to eat this cookie that was nestled under their, their cheeks. So they ate the cookie and all of a sudden we just see Thad just weirdly just like, wow. and I'm like, no, no, no Thad. You're gross, but it's great. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Anyways. So in the second episode, it, things just get weirder. So, in the beginning of the second episode, we, of course, have Denise, who is to give Craig this promise ring. And, like, so they're almost, like, they're engaged. You, you should really just say that these characters are really engaged. Because they should just be anyways. But why, like, because... Like, Craig is saying, like, they've been together for almost, like, two years, or, like, a year and a half. Just tie the knot there, buddy. Uh, and really, if you probably tie the knot, you probably get that woman, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Finally, after wedding and what, if she's waiting for the time to be right, maybe, like, a wedding would finally cement that time, I would like to say. So, Craig goes on and has this ring... And he is just desperate to feel feel up something uh, to where, like, Craig is just hoping that Denise is to let him kind of feel, feel uh, some, some melons, feel some melons, if you know what I mean, metaphorically saying. But it seems that all for naught. Man, just, just melons. Not even, not even going to any kind of bases. Just kind of feeling, you know what I'm saying? I understand, I understand where Craig's coming at. Where it's just like, just the thought of just <laughs> pushing on. So, Craig goes on in this episode. He has this ring. And so, in the second episode, we have it where... Uh, Alex is to meet up with Thad's sister, and immediately Alex is asking this girl out, saying like, hey, do you want to go out on Saturday? And she's like, yeah, Saturday. And like, this girl can barely speak English, and of course, Thad is to say this, because of course, Thad is to mention to Alex that um, their, uh, their father, Thad's daughter, father, who is Connor, 
uh, was to go to Bosnia, uh, I guess, during military time because he was in the military war of sorts. Uh, and he had had an affair with some Bosnian woman there and hence the stepsister. So Alex goes and asks this girl's girl out and immediately he gets her number, he gets her digits. So as Craig is to say that he has a promise ring, Alex is saying like, well, we're going to need to throw a bla bachelor party and what better place to go to this solid gold club uh, where there's a bunch of women there that you can go on and supposedly Alex has these rules where he's like, hey, don't touch the, don't touch the, the paintings of which I guess he used to call women paintings, which technically he's really right. Like, hey, like, that's, that's a masterpiece there. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Thumbs up to all the ladies out there. Thumbs up. Anyways, so... Alex goes on, and he, and we have Thad who comes into the Solid Gold Club every single time. He's like, he knows every single girl in there, and he's like, hey, yeah, you, you. <laughs> you, sh champagne, blah, 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 Mercedes, and this, and that. And like, he knows every single girl by heart there, because he probably spends every single day there, and it might be ruined because of his sister possibly being at, the, at this place. And it's kind of funny how Thad is telling his stepsister, like, no, don't go there. Bad, bad. But he goes there every day as if he knows these girls' names. But he, like, I think it's going to just scar or ruin his ability to be there if also sister works there. Anyways, so, because that's what's going to happen in this episode. So... They go to this solid gold club, and it seems that we have Craig, who is to put his fingers uh, in some holes, if you know what I mean. And I'm not talking about bowling balls. Uh, and so Craig is to lose his promise ring by going in and touching. Touching the masterpieces. So... We go on and have Craig who realizes as uh, they leave this solid gold club that he has lost his ring. And so they go in there the next day to desperately try to find this ring. And now Alex is giving Craig this, uh, uh, God, what is it called? The, 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 the thing that tests for metal, the metal detector. That would be a thing in our lives. The little handheld one. So Craig just starts go through and like, Woo, everybody. And, Woo, and Woo. So Craig has to now go and ask this woman. Yeah, like I lost a ring in you. <laughs> Can I get it back? And the girl's like, we do have a lost and found, and Craig's like, really? So, come to find out there seems to be a lot of uh, girls that are to uh, be getting a number of items that kind of fall out of them at some points. So, that's what this lost and, found, lost and found weirdly was. So, these guys are touching all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, that's... Uh... Anyways, so, Craig has asked the... the the girl who's kind of tending bar here, Alex is saying, it's like, well, like, what do you tell other people? What do you do? And she says, like, well, I tell them I wait tables. And like, Alex is like, well, yeah, like, of course, like everybody is to kind of tell little white lies. So Craig is to realize that his promise ring is not there. And so Sammy is thinking, it's like, well, hey, how about I just go into uh, Craig's place and just looks like there's a robbery and I'll like drop a deuce and then I'll leave. So Craig is to have to come and and pick Denise up because she, of course, uh, had taken a flight out, I guess, to go and see her family. So 
Craig is apologizing to Denise about what had all happened. So all of a sudden, Denise and Craig come home to their place to then realize that, I guess, Sammy, when he dropped his deuce, there was a ring in there. And so Denise forces Craig to put his ring back on through the duty. And Craig goes on and picks up this ring through the duty and puts it on his hand. And then Denise says, like, yeah, go wash your hand. I'm like, I, I would have said wash the ring beforehand, but bleh. <sighs> Anyways, so Thad, who is to now go to this club where, again, he knows every Mercedes, blah, blah, this girl, that girl. Blah, blah. So Thad goes on and he then sits at this bar or at this club. And so... Come to find out we had Alex's date, who is Bosnia, uh, was to go on and dance. And then it seems that she had gone and done so well that I guess she got hired there. All of a sudden, Thad is to see this new girl with his red hair. And he's like, hmm, like, let me see some of that. Like, feels like I'm getting a little whiffy stiffy. So all of a sudden, this girl turns around and it's that sister He's like, no! <laughs> so Thad runs off to try to get even with Alex. And so here's my one thing. Why doesn't Thad call Alex moron? Because technically with the way that this guy's last name is, you can easily call him moron and... Like, that would always be his nickname. But he always calls him Moran. Um, like, the way it's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, and immediately it makes me think of, like, uh, uh, Power Rangers Megaforce. When the one blonde-haired girl uh, was called Moran. And I was thinking, like, man, that's an awful name to call somebody. Because immediately everybody's going to be thinking Moron. Uh, and that isn't right. Like, that girl is freaking, um, like, it's not her fault that she got a crappy name. <laughs> it's just my thought process, and plus also I feel bad for Alex because I call him moron. Uh, but he's not. Like, he's kind of a, a, a kind of a smart guy when the, when the story is to, is to do it right. So... Anyways, that's the second episode. So the third episode, of course, is to be uh, that Alex is having a Bertha day. And so Alex, of course, is having this Bertha day. And so we have a girl named Natrina who is to give him $100 and is wanting both of them to go off to have Alex ride off with this Lamborghini where he's going to get a little bit of a blowy. And so... We have this episode where a bunch of the guys are all partying. And so Coach Marty is to mention that he wants all these guys to have a curfew. Because it seems like these guys are kind of just going through the motions and, and all that jazz. So for this episode, we have Alex kind of telling the guys the story about like what had happened last night. And it's like, wow, that's crazy. So, all of a sudden, Thad is just boasting around about how he doesn't need uh, a girl to, to get uh, some, some lovin's, if you know what I mean. Uh, because, of course, he has this pocket toy. So, it's not a toy. Say it correctly, sir. <laughs> Say it correctly. Hmm? Don't, don't contradict me, sir. Anyways, so that is to go on and, like, say that weirdly that this is like a hand-me-down kind of thing, weirdly. <laughs> because I guess Connor, who is Thad's dad, was to fight in the war. And so as he was to die in this war, he was to hand this, this pocket toy off to this other soldier... To say like, hey, give this to my son to where he can go on and, 
And every time he's alone, he could just... <laughs> so, we have Thad who says that every time he uses this, plast this pocket toy, that he immediately thinks of his dad, which is freaking weird, but still... Uh, it's part of the story, but the way in which that that delivers this was freaking hilarious. I, and I laughed a pretty, I had a pretty good chuckle going on right there. So, all of a sudden, like, all the guys are just because, like, maybe a number of them may not have this thing called the ability to get women whenever they like. No judgment, because it's not that easy being green. So, or blue and, and orange and... And white. Anyways, so <laughs> we have our characters who steal Thad's pocket toy and everybody is starting to use it. And they're saying that it's like a waterfall or like it's like the greatest thing that they've ever felt. But all of a sudden, all of them start to concoct this uh, this STD uh, which, of course, is syphilis. And so all of them start getting this. And so some people are having suspicions about, like, where they got this from. So, so all of a sudden, everybody is to have this, like, uh, this medication being given to them, these, an they, these antibiotics. Because uh, I guess everybody is to break out with... Uh, it's like a an STD pandemic. So, uh, so we of course, have the coaches, like, talking about it. And they're like, really? Like, these guys? Like, they're that hard up that all of them got? Like, and they're like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, uh, and they kind of roll... And they kind of mention how, like, syphilis and how it rolls off the tongue weirdly. Uh, There's the weirdest saying ever. So... All the guys are still passing this thing around, whether it gives them uh, the sif or not. Uh, the stiff sip, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so, all of a sudden, like, Thad is realizing that this thing is gone. And so, he starts to get in, like, a severe rage. Uh, and so, he goes on and immediately realizes that Alex was the one, was to be the one that took it. And so... Thad is telling Alex, hey, if you don't give me back my thing, my toy, if you don't give me this thing back, if you don't give me this pocket thing back, I'm going to put all of my frustrations, my uh, se actual frustrations upon you. And then Thad walks off and he's like, I realize how weird that sounded. <laughs> and then Thad walks off. So... Alex is like, we need to know exactly where this thing is. We need to, like, everybody, like, let me know which, which who has it. Uh, but before we give it right back to Thad, let's all have a go on it. You know what I mean? So everybody's starting to, like, heavily pass it around again. So I'm like, dude, just freaking, like, shell out the money to get one of these bad boys. Like, you can have it, like, on Amazon just overnighted, right? For those of you that take buy these kind of things. Hmm? Come on. I'm sure any number of people will probably have Amazon bought it. I'm sure, right? With the exclusion of if you're a woman and watching this, you probably have your own. Hmm, if you know what I mean. If, if you've never had a... Uh, a, a toy in your life that you need to have one. Everyone. Every, every, everybody. Because there's probably going to be a time where you may not exactly be 100% satisfied and you need to be 100% satisfied. If you know what I mean? Satisfaction guaranteed, if you know what I mean. Because sometimes you need some extra loving and you can't get that from the oven, if you know what I mean? What is he saying? I don't even know anymore. Let's finish this up. So, all of a sudden, Sammy is to have this toy, and he's taking, uh, uh, not yet, Natrina's, uh, kind of, uh, 
toy of sorts that she, of course, is to have. And Sammy is to play around with it. So this girl is to possibly get the Sif, uh, the stiff Sif. And so Sammy goes on and he is trying to, like, bargain with this girl to give Alex another fun night uh, by kind of, like, tempting to her, tempting with her that there's a possibility that she may get the stiff Sif again. And so Natrina goes on and spends another time with Alex uh, because Sammy is to basically force her to. So, and so Sammy's giving uh, Alex a rubber saying that like, hey, she has the stiff Sif. So just kind of just wear a rubber. And he's like, oh, okay, great. So, so what happens is, is that Alex doesn't have the, the pocket uh, toy of sorts. And so what that does is he puts this string around Thad's badals or balls for English people and then puts the balls onto this string, I guess wanting to just stretch out some of Alex's berries, but not twig. So... Because what really happens is, of course, Craig uh, is to desperately want some of that Denise. And Craig is to just be like, well, what do I need to do on the football field to get uh, to be with you, Denise? You know what I mean? And Denise is just like, well, you need to do like 200 yards and three TDs. And so Craig is just like, okay, fine. Like, if that means that... So, but then Alex is saying to Craig, it's like, you know what? You're not going to do well in that game. Like, immediately, if you have the pressure of that on your mind, you're not thinking of the game. So you're, like, you're not going to do well. And Alex is just like, maybe you should try to get some loving before the game, not after. And so Craig is cry crying. Craig is trying to talk to Denise to say, like, well... How would I get that loving before the game? And, I, and there's a guarantee that I will go and get. And Denise is like, no, not going to work. So Craig goes on and gets some secret loving from a pocket thing. And so Denise is to find out because she's like a hawk. If her man is trying to get some secret uh, plays your Denise knows. So Denise goes on and is to make her way back to this locker room and is to hand over Thad his pocket plastic of sorts. And Thad is like, yeah! And he goes off and he just like drops his, uh, his trowel and he just is like, yeah! And he's going to town and he's like, I love you, Dad! And I'm like, no! Thad, stop! <laughs> Please! For the love of plastic! No! <laughs> so, Denise is to be upset with Alex, and she goes and slams this door, and this, of course, is to hurt Alex's badals, uh, but really, who knows how big Alex's badals already are, so maybe it didn't really stretch him out all that badly. So, with that said, that's kind of how the third episode is to do this thing called End. Because uh, the most point I've kind of explained most of third through first episode. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about Blue Mountain State. If you're never going to see it or if you have seen it. If you've seen it multiple times because you're that kind of person. And that's completely okay at the end of the day. Because I am going to say I'm going to get the heck out of here. Because I have other things to review and do and do this thing called sleep at some point. So I would probably try to accomplish that and get that done. So at the end of the day, goodbye everybody. Bye everybody.